Hey kids, it's Mr. Fly here. Welcome to part two of October 2019's Bike News. If you're interested in what's been going on in the UK motorcycling world, stick around and stay tuned. Okay, so this is uh, part two of October 29's Bike News Review. If you haven't seen part one, go back and check that out. I posted that a couple of uh, days ago. Loads of stuff in there. Uh, another couple of papers to go through in this review, and then towards the end of the review, I've got a load of uh, parish notices as well, some stuff about what's going on with the channel and associated bits and pieces, uh, as well as some news on what videos are coming up on the channel as well. So if you're a regular viewer, stick around and stay tuned for that. All right, without further ado, let's crack on with Bike News. Right then, the first paper here, the uh, the uh, front page, Reading King of BSB. We'll come back to BSB in a minute, but the first uh, story that I've picked up here, Sky is the Limit for New Spitfire. This is uh, CCM. Um, now, you may or may not have seen a video I did um, a, a couple of months ago now, uh, where I actually was lucky enough to get to ride a CCM Spitfire. It was a flat tracker version, I think I rode. It was actually was owned by Henry Cole. I'll put a link up in the corner if I can work out how to do that and remember to do so um, and uh, I was really keen to have a go on one of these because I really I, I nearly bought a CCM Spitfire when they first came out because I just thought they looked amazing they look sort of custom even though they're factory built anyway what CCM have done now is brought out this latest version um, it's got, it's limited to 300 bikes it's got Olin suspension it's 9,995 pounds it's under 10 grand so um, that's uh, you know a great price for something that really is a, a sort of a custom bike it's called um, the Limited Edition 6, and it's the highest spec uh, Spitfire yet, apparently. Now, to me, having said all that, and I, and, I, and I do love the bike, in fact, let's just read some of the bits I highlighted here. So, um, first off, 600cc single um, cylinder engine. It's actually an engine out of a dirt bike, so it's a bit of a thumper. Um, it lets you, with this particular bike, you can choose pretty much everything. You can customise it as you wish. There's all sorts of seat styles and accessories and things that you can add to the bike, so it's highly customisable. Uh, CCM are going to produce just 300 of them, and as I say, they start at 9995 but I still think that's a bit of a bargain. You can secure one with 500 quid. So that's the basic numbers of it. But anyway, what I was going to say is, I love the way the, that these look. They look absolutely fantastic. Um, in terms of the ride quality, it does ride very much, feels like you're riding a dirt bike, which I uh, I never realised until I rode Henry's Henry's machine. So a um, little bit odd, um, not, the, not the best ride ever, I would say, but a lovely looking bike. But uh, the point I was going to make is they keep coming out with these limited editions. I understand why CCM do it, because of course um, there are homologation reasons. If you only make a limited number of bikes, and I'm assuming it might be 300 of a particular model, you don't have to comply with all the details of things Things like, I think I'm right in saying, uh, Euro 5. Uh, I may be wrong, but there's certainly there are less regulations that you have to adhere to if you only do a limited run. So what CCM do, it seems to me, is they come up with a bike, they call it something, they do a limited run, then they make a tiny few tweaks and then they do another limited run, calling it something else. So I'm not quite sure what the rules are, how different the bikes have to be, but for me, this looks just like the Spitfire of old. So I don't know, I, I, it feels like they're just doing it to get around the rules. If you're going to buy one because you want a limited edition bike, uh, don't be disappointed if it says they're going to make 300 because uh, next year they'll make 300 of something else that looks very, very similar. So just, I don't know, maybe it's me being cynical. I do love the looks of them. I don't much like the ride of them and uh, the way they keep bringing out more and more limited editions. I just think it's starting to feel a little bit odd. But Or is that just me? Am I being unkind there? be very interested to hear your view on that one. So that was the first story I picked out of this paper. Next one. Naked H2 takes off. Now this is one of these bikes that has been uh, uh, promised to us or given us, we've had tantalizing glimpses of it for a while. This is the new supercharged uh, ZH2 from Kawasaki. So using their supercharging technology from the H2 and the H2SX, they've now brought out a big bruising naked bike. Um, some of the headline numbers here, 200 brake horsepower, these days that doesn't sound like a huge amount does it but no well it is obviously but uh, you know there are plenty of bikes that have got 200 brake horsepower maybe not so many nakeds uh, 998 cc motor supercharged of course uh, it's got uh, a load of imu um, electronics so lean angle sensitive stuff um, it's got a claimed curb weight of 239 kilograms which sounds pretty heavy to me uh, i'm assuming that's dry but it's still 17 kilograms less than the H2SX, but that's quite a lot of um, weight, I think, for a, for a naked bike. Kawasaki um, are, says here we'll be keen to price the bike around the 13,000 mark, but I don't think we have any fixed prices yet. Don't know what you think of this. I, I've, um, I mean, there's no doubt it's going to be a lovely bike to ride, I'm sure, and blisteringly quick. Um, and things like the self-healing paint and stuff like that is all very clever. But I don't like of now the three supercharged bikes that Kawasaki make. I'm not actually keen on the looks of them. I know they've gone to make them look sort of, um, 
well, I don't know how they've gone to make them look. I mean, they look, they sort of remind me something like something out of Star Wars, a spaceship or something. I'm not sure I like the styling of them, although they do ride very beautifully. Um, this particular one, though, I think is the weakest of all the bikes in terms of looks. Uh, I've got another picture down here. In fact, let me show you this picture. Because on this one, it's only a small picture, it might not be very clear on the screen. I think it shows you, you know, it, I think it looks a bit like a bloated hamster. There's just something about it I don't like the looks of. People are raving about it, um, but I'm a little bit disappointed in the looks of the, of the new Naked H2. But uh, there we go. Again, tell me if I'm wrong. Am I being outrageous? It is a matter of taste, of course. One, you know, one person likes one bike, somebody else likes another. Personally, don't like the looks of these. All right, um, next thing I've pulled out here. Ah! Now, if you watched uh, part one of Bike News Review, you'll know that I mentioned BSB because it was the final um, round of the championship two weekends ago. Uh, and I was very lucky enough because of my new sponsors, uh, Bennett's, uh, they invited me along to the final round of BSB. First time I've ever, I'm ashamed to say, ever been to a BSB race. I've been mean to go for ages, but boy, am I glad I went because not only, of course, did I get looked after well by Bennett's, but uh, I had a fantastic day. The racing was absolutely amazing. A uh, little bit cold, but I was lucky enough to get to go on the grid walk. Uh, I went to the press conferences as well. I didn't make any videos of this, by the way. It was just a, a nice day out, but uh, the absolute icing on the cake, as I mentioned in part one, was uh, Bennett's actually organised it so that I could uh, give out the uh, the trophies for race two of the main races. So I got to meet Scott Redding and others. Uh, just brilliant, just brilliant stuff. So thank you to uh, Bennett's for making that happen. And I'm now, of course, a BSB convert and will be following it very closely next year. And of course, uh, Scott Redding went on to win the championship uh, on that last race, uh, him having come from MotoGP uh, from a long time in MotoGP uh, previously. And uh, so great to see him in his rookie year, basically become the BSB champion. It means he now gets to ride in World Superbikes for Ducati. So really looking forward to seeing how that pans out as well. Maybe I'm gonna have to get back into racing again. I used to follow MotoGP quite religiously. When it went to BT Sport, I stopped because I just resented paying the money to watch it on BT and never really got to follow it in highlights mode. Um, but now uh, with this BSB thing, I think I might be getting much more into it. So yeah, if you've not been along to a BSB race, Ticket prices are much better to get in. You get loads of access to uh, to the riders and the paddock and what have you. Thoroughly recommend it next year when the weather's a bit warmer and it all kicks off again. Get along to a BSB race if you haven't done before. Slap wrist to me for not going along before because it was really, really good. All right, uh, next story, the last story, in fact, in this first paper. It's got incredible pulling power. This is the first ride review of that brand new Street Triple RS that uh, I was so happy to see launch. So um, um, Michael Neves has gone out and ridden it. He's a, a rider I very much respect. And his verdict uh, on the bike, basically, it's good. So he says the new RS isn't a quantum leap over uh, forward over the old model, so not hugely different. Uh, but uh, what else does it say? Too much ABS intervention on the track is its only flaw. It's beautifully built, refined, well equipped, and as sharp at the racetrack limit as it is friendly on the road. So he likes it. Um, doesn't give a star rating yet. I suppose they'll do a more in-depth review perhaps when they do that. But uh, yeah, it looks, uh, it looks nice now. I think with this, the new lights uh, you know, at the front anyway, with the sort of eyebrow bits look really good. Not so sure about on the side, as I said in part one. But uh, yeah, looking forward to having a go on the Street Triple RS as soon as I can. I imagine they'll be in dealers probably springtime, and that's probably when I'll be able to get my hands on one. Um, so yeah, look forward to having a go on that. Alrighty, so that's uh, the first paper. Next one, uh, and the first story, this is hot off the press. Baby Panigale comes of age. Now this is something very uh, close to my heart. Uh, the Panigale is a bike that I think is absolutely beautiful looking. I think over recent iterations, the bike has lost for some of its beauty actually, funnily enough. I think the original Panigale is the one that looks best. I'm, uh, full disclosure, I own an 899 Panigale, which I still think is one of the best looking bikes ever made. Um, and it's a, it's a fantastic bike. That bike, of course, was replaced by the 959 when Euro 4 came in. Now with Euro 5, um, they're bringing out what they're now calling the Panigale V2, of course, with the other bikes having moved on to the V4. It sort of makes sense to call this the baby Panigale a V2. So it's uh, it's out there now, it's on sale next year. It's a 955cc V-twin, pretty much the same engine as it's always been, but as I say, tweaked for Euro 5. Puts out 153 brake horsepower, so it's a little increase on the previous bike. 76.7 um, foot-pounds of torque, 176 kilograms dry, so still uh, relatively light, and 14,999, 15 grand. So 15 grand for what we would perhaps call a middleweight bike, but of course, 955cc, this is almost a litre bike now, of course, isn't it? But nonetheless, great to see that Ducati are still investing in the uh, in the twin, in the V-twin, and that there is this smaller Panigale that uh, those of us that don't want to shell out on a new Superleggera can actually get a bit of Panigale action. 
some some of the other things worth pointing out here one of the big changes is they've now managed to make the exhaust mounted underneath again got rid of those monstrosities that stopped me buying a 959 um the 959 was out when i got my 899 i managed to find the last 899 in the country purely because i like the exhaust on that better uh, and boy am i glad i did but now that's no longer an excuse uh, now you've got a single-sided swing arm as well um which you didn't have on the 899 but you I think you did on the 959, maybe not. Um, no, you didn't actually, but you have now. Um, and it looks, to all intents and purposes, if you don't read the badge, it looks just like the V4. A um, little bit narrower, of course, because the engine is a bit slimmer. But I think it's going to be an excellent road bike. Uh, again, really hope I get to ride one of these. I've never actually ridden a 959, but uh, it'd be good to compare it, see what it feels like against my 899, which, by the way, I ain't going to sell. I still love that bike. I still think it looks beautiful. I think the 899 still looks better than this, actually, because it's got that original Panigale look about it. But uh, great to see that uh, Ducati are still investing in, investing in the smaller bikes. So anything else here that I've uh, highlighted, it's got uh, new injectors and intake manifolds, um, new exhaust we mentioned. It's got a small two mil ride height hike. Ain't gonna make too much difference, I don't think. I think that's because of some differences in the suspension. Uh, it's got cornering ABS Evo, traction control Evo 2, wheelie control Evo, uh, quick shifter Evo 2, and engine braking control Evo. So in other words, the electronics has been rejigged a bit in an Evo kind of way. Um, so loads of electronics, three riding modes, and another big change, uh, a change over my 899 for sure, it's now got a full color TFT dash, which looks lovely. Um, mine's got the standard LCD, which actually is pretty good uh, on the on the Panigale 899, but now it's gone color. So yeah, really very few reasons why you, if you've uh, got 15 grand to spend and you want a good road race bike, this is uh, probably the one to go for. Look forward to reading some of the reviews and maybe get a go on one myself in the future. Lovely, lovely bike. All right, next up. More Ducatis, I'm afraid. Ducati have launched quite a few new models in the last week or so. This is the uh, Street Fighter V4, which again, we've known as uh, was on its way for some time, because of course we had the Pikes Peak race when we first saw it out and sadly ended in tragedy. But anyway, glossing over that, the uh, the new bike uh, is here, based on the V4 Panigale, of course. Fairings ripped off in the usual way. Uh, road lights put on, a little bit more of an upright seating position. Uh, 208 brake horsepower this one puts out, uh, and 217 BHP if you've got the Acropovic can on it, and it's 170 kilograms, so nice and light as well. Um, I'm sure it's gonna ride amazingly well. Um, just wonder what you thought of the looks of this, because I personally think they've taken a beautiful bike, the Panigale, and made one that doesn't look that special. If you, you, know, if you block off the front, it's obviously got the back end still of the Panigale, looks unmistakably like one. But I don't, again, I don't like the lights on here. Something about these really narrow lights that manufacturers are doing now. We talked about it with the Kawasaki H2 just now, the naked version of that. This one, although this doesn't look like a bloated hamster, that sort of very narrow profile at the front, insect like almost, just doesn't do it for me. So uh, although, again, I'm sure it's super fast and amazing bike, looks wise, I'm afraid Ducati, this one hasn't worked. I don't often say that about Ducati. Ducati are one of those manufacturers that usually reliably churn out beautiful looking machines. Well, I'm afraid this ain't one of them. Maybe it'll grow on me when I see it in the flesh. Um, it's also got the wings, by the way, as well, for extra downforce, but uh, uh, there we are. So that's the, that's the new Panigale, well, not Panigale, the new Street Fighter V4, I should say. I don't think we've got any prices yet. They're expecting it to be, well, standard trim's price at 17,595 and the S19,795. So, for 15 grand, you could have that new baby Panigale. For an extra two and a half, you could have this. I think I'd have the baby Panigale, personally. All right, moving on, next story. Oh, this is incredible. Bikers respect killed PC. Now, this is the story of uh, PC Andrew Harper, who was killed in the line of duty a couple of months back. Um, and I mention this because there was a big ride out in uh, honor of him, if you like, uh, over the weekend. 5,000 bikes got together and rode from RAF Benson uh, to RAF Abingdon, or Abingdon Airfield, I think it's an army base actually now. But 5,000 bikers turned up to show their respect. What an incredible thing. I'm not sure how long it took to organize. A few people did mention it to me beforehand about whether I was going. I would love to have gone, unfortunately I was away. Actually, I was in Mallorca at the weekend. It was a lovely, I had a lovely time. But um, had I been around, I definitely would have gone. 5,000 people in a convoy. That's just amazing and takes some organizers, isn't it? So uh, thumbs up to everybody that went along and showed support there. Great. So I suppose, even though it's, um, you know, it's a sad, thing that's being honoured here. I imagine it was it was quite a fun uh, ride. I hope the weather was okay as well. Okay, so that was that. That's the biggest um, ride out I've, I've heard of. Talking point, the letters page, love this, because um, the star letter this week in uh, MCN's letters page uh, is written by somebody called Rob Taylor, uh, and it's entitled, Keep Your Call cool With The Cops. And basically, he's just agreeing with the column I wrote last week in MCN, so <laughs> chuffed about that. I, in case you don't know, I have a sort of a monthly, well, it is monthly, I rotate with three other writers, a little column called Blog Off, 
vlog off, blog off uh, in MCN. Last week, I talked about um, how to deal with the police if you get stopped on your bike. Uh, and my basic tenet was, uh, they can make your life a lot harder than you can make theirs. Just be nice to them, cooperate, and everything will go much smoother. And Rob Taylor is basically agreeing with me, and for which he got the star letter. So thank you, Rob. I'm glad you read the article, and I'm glad we concur. And thank you, MCN, for making it the star letter. That's great. I'm chuffed that people read that uh, that column, uh, even more chuffed when they write into MCN about it. So, uh, so that's great news. All right, next one. Group test, MCN's 250. One more of these before we've done with uh, bike news. Separated at birth. So what they've done is something a little bit different. They've taken three bikes, but they're all based on the same Yamaha DNA. So they've taken the MT-07, the Tracer 700, and pitted them against the new Yamaha Tenere 700, a bike which I've not yet even seen, let alone ridden. Uh, many people have asked me when am I going to ride it. I don't know is the answer. I don't really have any relationship with Yamaha, except for my local dealer. who usually uh, on the phone to me when they've got a new demo in. Haven't spoken to them about this yet. Makes me think they haven't got a demo. But when they do, I'm hopeful that I'll go and ride it. Anyway, um, they've pitted these uh, three bikes against each other on their MCN 250. And surprisingly, in fact, um, the Tenere wins. Uh, and the Martin Fitzgibbons, the uh, verdict he gave was that the uh, Tenere may be a sliver down on power and agility, but those tiny detriments are more than made up for by its huge advantages in suspension, quality, chassis composure, comfort and overall air of quality. He just thinks it knocks the others into a cocked hat. So uh, so that's amazing. I was surprised about that. Uh, I mean, it is more expensive to be fair. The MT-07-6495, Tracer 700, 7545, Tenere 8845. So, you know, it's more than two grand more than the MT-07 uh, and a grand more than the Tracer. But nonetheless, uh, it seems like it's worth it. So, uh, so that was a bit of a surprise. Alrighty, uh, final story in this paper. Bagger new tricks. <laughs> Look at this thing. This is the new Indian Challenger, latest in a line of baggers. If you watch part one of the bike news, you see that I talked about baggers there we, with the Honda Goldwing and the um, BMW K1600 bagger. Uh, well, now Indian have brought out a bagger version, and here it is. And really, I only raise this because I want to show you this picture of it. What do you make of these big fairings that the, uh, the the American manufacturers seem to so love? I assume the Americans love them. Now, let me know if you're an American. Um, I just think these massive fairings that some of the Harleys and the Indians have just look ridiculous. Personally, it looks there's nothing about that front end to me that appeals. I'm sure it rides beautifully, and the engine and everything is lovely. And I'm a huge fan of Indian bikes. I've only ever ridden one. Uh, I recently rode the Flat Tracker, check out my, view, my review, I'll put a link somewhere, which was beautiful. Uh, and I imagine these other big cruisers are similarly great to ride and I hopefully I'll get a chance to do so at some point. But uh, this particular one with the front end that looks, let's face it, like a car, or at worst a Dodgem, just horrible. Um, maybe it handles okay, but I imagine there's a load of weight up high. I can't imagine it does anything great for the handling. What do you make of that? Is it just me? Um, what am I missing here? I'm sure it's great weather protection. Some of the headline figures here, just while we're talking about it, the um, basic bike, the Challenger, 23,599. Um, the um, limited edition is 24,999. It's got a 1700 uh, CC engine, or one, one, sorry, let's say, 1769cc uh, engine, uh, so massive great engine, built to waft it says here, uh, and it's 361 kilograms dry, so a weighty old beast to move around on your driveway, um, but I'm sure once it's moving it's great, but uh, now uh, given the choice between these and the ones we looked at in part one, I'll take either the uh, BMW or the Honda, but for me the Honda would win, so there we go, that's it for the, for the Indian bagger. I uh, look forward to seeing one in the flesh though, all the same. Right, I said at the start of the video, I'd give you some parish notices. I forgot these last time and I got slammed for it. So uh, a few things that I want to mention. Uh, first off, got a brand new website coming in the next few days. In fact, by the time you see this on Saturday, it may already be up. I'm expecting it imminently. You do go and check out www.themissendonflyer.com. Um, there'll either be a holding page, which means it's not there yet, or there'll be a brand new website there. In it, I've got all sorts of stuff that uh, I thought I should have in a website, things like uh, frequently asked questions, um, uh, stuff about uh, my favorite bikes, stuff about my bikes, um, some links to some of my videos, but more importantly, perhaps, is some brand new merchandise as well. I've had some issues with Teespring recently, Teespring being the merchandise supplier that you can use with YouTube. You'll see on my, if you go to my main YouTube channel, there's a little red spring in the top right. If you click on that, it takes you to my existing Teespring merchandise. But I've had some feedback from um, subscribers in the US in particular. They've tried to order stuff and it says it won't ship to the US, which is bizarre because Teespring is a US company and certainly it's set up to work with the US. It used to work because people in the US have bought my merch in the past. So Teespring seems to be not behaving for, for US customers. And the way I'm gonna do it via the website is via a new independent supplier based here in the UK, but ships worldwide, 
better value, better quality, and in the fullness of time, better range of merchandise as well. So when that website comes up, do go and check that out. Do check out the merchandise. As I say, it's going to change regularly. Probably every quarter, we'll be changing the merchandise that's there just to keep it fresh, and I'll let you know when there are new lines available. So, uh, so that's going to be interesting. So that's coming along. Next thing wanted to mention, Motorcycle Live. I said uh, that it's the time of... Um, uh, bike shows at the moment. Well, of course, the NEC show comes along in November. Lots of people have asked if I'm going. Uh, the answer is yes, uh, but I'm only going on the last day, which is the 24th of November, the Sunday. Uh, I'll be there on my sponsors for this video stand, Custom Fit Guards. I'll be on their stand from 12 o'clock on the 24th. Reason why I'm only going there the last day is because actually I'm out on a big bike tour uh, on the other side of the world for most of November. So uh, I won't tell you more about that until it's done and in the bag. You'll be seeing that next year. It's my mega tour of this year. Can't wait. Uh, I actually fly back on the 23rd of November and I'll be at Motorcycle Live on the 24th so uh, I will be jet lagged so if you're coming along it'll be great to see you but uh, I may look a bit tired so I apologise in advance if I do see you there but uh, it would be fantastic come and say hello custom fit guard stand uh, not sure where that's located but it'll be on the map uh, I'll be there as I say from 12 o'clock on the last Sunday of the show um, so I'll see you then uh, must just thank uh, before we get on to videos that are coming up uh, my sponsors as usual so custom fit guards that sponsor this video in particular uh, and of course my Patreons and and members thank you so much for your support it makes all the difference without my sponsors and my patreons and my youtube channel members i just could not continue to do this so uh, thank you to those guys if you haven't already uh, checked out my patreon page there's a little video on there which is quite fun go and check that out and have a look see what you think um and that'd be great to have you along if you can if not no problem okay next um what's coming up on the channel in the next few weeks and days while I'm away, by the way, hopefully nothing will, nothing will uh, change on the channel. I'll still be posting videos, answering your comments, etc., um, internet connection uh, permitting. But I've got more coming up on the Triumph Scrambler 1200 XC, which is the slightly cheaper version of the big 1200 Scramblers. Already posted a video or two on that. More coming. Um, on Thursday, November the 7th, I've got the first part of the brand new tour series. Not the one that I'll be doing at the time, but another tour series that's already in the bag. A three-parter starts on November the 7th. I'm going to run those... Uh, one after the other as opposed to spreading them out with maybe bike reviews between them I'm just going to see if the, how the views work out if I run the tour series one after another so we'll give that a go it's a, as I say a three-parter starting on November the 7th got my in-depth review of the BMW R1250 RS very popular bike I get when it, again whenever I put up videos of the RS it seems to get quite a lot of views and good feedback so my in-depth review what it's like to live with the lessons I've learned all that coming up as well more Royal Enfield mods again, something I know people are keen to see. And make a note in your diary, Friday, November the 29th will be my next live stream. 8 p.m. as usual would be fantastic if you can join me live and I'll speak to you then. All right, that's it for this time. Hope you've enjoyed uh, bike news and I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been Rissenden Fly. Cheerio.